The White House panics after it's discovered a member of special counsel Jack Smith's team met with the White House before indicting former President Donald Trump. Poland and Belarus bring new levels of anxiety to Europe that World War III is just around the corner, and the DOJ blocks Senator Chuck Grassley from key information in the Hunter Biden investigation. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos on Twitter and Facebook. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. I'd also like to thank today's video sponsor, Replace Your Mortgage, and I'll tell you how to pay off your entire house in seven years or less later in this video. A recent poll from the Associated Press has revealed that a wide majority of Americans view President Joe Biden as too old for being the leader of the free world. According to this new poll, a staggering 77% of respondents said he's too old to be effective as president for another four years. Now, this is even more concerning. 69% of Democrats agreed Joe Biden is not mentally fit to run the United States of America. Now, this is catching me off guard. I thought he was the most beloved president of our lifetime, but now they're saying, hey, thanks, but get out of the White House. Now, this sentiment is likely to fuel debates about leadership in the upcoming political landscape as Democrats start to worry that Biden will actually want to run for 2024. Transitioning to the realm of healthcare and economics, Senator Bernie Sanders has slammed President Biden with a backhanded compliment. During CNN's State of the Union, Senator Sanders started by championing Biden's actions on inflation and green energy, but emphasized that despite progress, approximately 60% of people in the country continue to live paycheck to paycheck, and the healthcare system remains a contentious issue. I love how Sanders is like, oh yeah, Biden's doing great with the economy, but the economy really sucks for 60% of the country. I mean, I, I would say he's politically biased, but he always leans Democrat, even though he's an independent. Now, speaking of politics, speculation is swirling about the future of former President Donald Trump. With his campaign raising over $7 million based off his recent mugshot, some pundits have claimed it's impossible to stop him from winning the GOP, uh, GOP primary. Analysts point out that Trump's fundraising success will likely solidify his position as the prominent figure in the Republican uh, political party, potentially setting the stage for a comeback in the 2024 presidential election. Now, what this really means is uh, these other people that are running for GOP, whether you like them or not, whether they would be better for the country or not, less divisive, less irritating, less investigated, they're simply going to run out of money before they can get to the presidential election. And it now costs close to a billion dollars to become president. And so because of those reasons, they're probably going to have to drop out. Now, despite Donald Trump's surge in popularity, some are arguing that Trump is legally disqualified from running because of his actions on January 6th. For instance, the New Hampshire Secretary of State, David Scanlon, claimed the 14th Amendment could be proof for his argument. In the 14th Amendment, it says that one cannot hold public office if he has engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States. I think it will ultimately come down to uh, Trump proving that he did not stir up the insurrection, even though he gave a speech the morning of the insurrection. Uh, most likely, uh, top lawyers are saying that the Supreme Court will have to be involved. Now, I'm trying to get uh, super lawyer Alan Dershowitz to come on my show. He's agreed to come on. Uh, we're working through scheduling, but I want to really help people understand the pros and the cons of what the former president is going through. Now, unfortunately for Donald Trump, he got bad news. Uh, judge Tanya Chutkin, an Obama-appointed judge, has just refused to delay President Trump's trial until after the election. 
This decision has significant consequences for Trump, as it suggests his legal challenges will precede the political landscape. Uh, in response to this horrible news, Trump stated on Truth Social, Today a biased, Trump-hating judge gave me only a two-month extension. Just what our corrupt government wanted, Super Tuesday, I will appeal. So basically, going into Super Tuesday, when you're deciding who's going to be the, the true frontrunner, they are going to try to tie Donald Trump up in court case after court case after court case so that he can't get out and meet with the people. It's been learned today that Special Prosecutor Jack Smith, who's trying to put Donald Trump in jail for over 500 years for having classified documents and allegedly having a major role in the January 6th Capitol attack, had one of his personal aides secretly meet with White House officials nine weeks before indicting Trump. This now raises questions. Why was somebody from the special prosecutor's office secretly meeting at the White House? What instructions were given from the White House? What information was shared from the White House? And what plans were hatched against the former president at the White House? Now, the White House has previously stated on public record, and so has the president, that they did not know Donald Trump was going to be indicted. They did not know the FBI was going to raid his house. That they had nothing to do, no part in any of the investigation. That they were at arm's length allowing the DOJ to call shots when in fact Jack Smith had someone from his office receiving direct orders from the White House regarding what to do with and to former President Donald Trump. Hey there, it's Stephen Gardner. I'm so sorry to interrupt this important interview, but if you have a mortgage, I want to tell you there's a better way to pay that house off in seven years or less. You need to meet with one of my coaches over at Replace Your Mortgage, where they will show you how to pay that house off in seven years or less using the same income you have right now. We all know that for most people, buying a house is their biggest investment, yet banking products are systematically designed to make banks wealthy. I want to help you be wealthy and get debt free even faster. So I'll leave a link down below for that. Go check it out. Okay, let's get back to this interview. The death of Wagner warlord uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin has now been confirmed by DNA evidence according to Russian investigators. While Russia's Kremlin continues to deny responsibility and calls for evidence, witness testimony and video evidence seems to support that the plane was taken down. Now, just recently, a video surfaced of Prigozhin seemingly referencing that he would be killed for his outspokenness against Vladimir Putin's regime, which adds credibility to the theory that the Kremlin and Vladimir Putin were behind the death. But Putin himself has said he was not involved. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is making waves after he made a bold statement. He declared that Ukraine won't hold elections unless the United States taxpayer and European Union foot the bill. Zelensky stated, I'm sorry, I will not hold elections on credit. I will not take money from weapons and give it to elections either. But if you give me this financial support, if the parliamentarians realize that we need to do this, then let's quickly change the legislation and most importantly, let's take risk together. So basically, if we want democracy in Ukraine, uh, the United States taxpayer has to pay for it. Now, I did a video going into greater detail this morning, so make sure to go watch that. It's only about three minutes long. In a developing international crisis, Poland and the Baltic states are making headlines by threatening to shut their borders with the country of Belarus. This comes amid concerns of Belarus's alliance with Russia and Putin as the Wagner mercenary group crosses the European border with Middle East and African migrants. Reports indicate that these countries are demanding a resolution to the escalating tension with Belarus, emphasizing the potential for situations to worsen quickly if it isn't handled properly. As it's uh, now been roughly two years since the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan, 
caused 13 American soldiers to lose their life. Mark Schmitz, a father who lost his son Jared Schmitz at the Kabul airport attack, has spoken out claiming the Biden administration is covering up evidence. Basically, they're trying to gather evidence and they're being blocked at every turn. Now, Mark has been trying to gather data to see if the attack could have been prevented, but has been unable to make progress because they don't want this information to come out. He stated, I've asked for copies of the SD card footage off of the rifle scope that would have been recorded, and they have been not been able to have that as evidence that this was or was not, in fact, the bomber. This card has been misplaced, they say, so I don't know what the truth is anymore. We can't seem to get a straight answer out of anybody. Now, isn't that interesting? The evidence about the botched withdrawal suddenly went missing. How convenient. David Weiss, a special counsel in the Hunter Biden probe, is now under fire after it has been found that the Department of Justice intervened on behalf, on his behalf, to respond to letters from the Republican officials investigating the Biden probe. This may sound a bit confusing, so let me go into detail. On May 9th of 2022, Senator Chuck Grassley sent a letter to David Weiss only, seeking info regarding the Hunter Biden investigation. Despite addressing this only to David Weiss, the Department of Justice Legal uh, uh, Affairs stepped in and responded on his behalf. Interestingly enough, the DOJ refused to turn over the requested information. According to other emails, Weiss had knowledge of this taking place. Now, this means that he was involved in the cover-up of the very person that he was tasked with investigating, and he's now the special counsel. So the guy who got Hunter Biden, the sweetheart deal, is now the one that has to prove Hunter Biden did something wrong. My guess is, just like the Kabul airport footage, he's not going to find anything. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. I appreciate you stopping by. I know there's a lot of places to get your news, so thank you so much for supporting the channel. Make sure to give this video a like. It really helps out. Also, hit that subscribe button and check out these videos on your way out today. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next video.